So VR is virtual reality, right? And that can be um, a series of uh, 3D pre-rendered um, uh, scenes that you can put yourself in, but people also use it interchangeably with 360 video often. Um, but 360 video is essentially your camera is um, in a actual real space and you are filming 360 video, which means you've got a crew that you have to hide. It means you've got cables you gotta get rid of, rigs you gotta get rid of. Um, a lot of times you have to make a plate on the bottom and rebuild the ground or rebuild the sky, et cetera. Um, and then augmented reality is uh, something that we're not gonna be covering today. It's a separate thing entirely. It involves usually a lot of real-time tracking to, uh, let's say this was a, have you seen these wine bottles now that you can get in like the store and they've got like a little face on them and if you put your camera up to the wine bottle, the face will come alive and tell you the history of like this, this wine. Um, and that's augmented reality. That's real-time tracking. Um, and we're usually using it for things like ads because that's where the money is. One of the things you have to do all the time inside of 360 video is get rid of the rig. This is a, um, a shot where we've got to get rid of this little rig here on the floor uh, in, in this little Pueblo. And what we're gonna do is we're going to move Using our lens tool, we're gonna to look down and we're gonna do some roto paint on top of this. So let me show you how that works. I'll show you how you can do this really fast. First, we're going to go to our effects controls and we're going to select our background image. I'm gonna duplicate my background image here and I'm going to go over to effect. I'm going to go to Mocha by Imagineer Systems, select Mocha BR. And now I don't actually have to launch Mocha at all. I can just use Mocha the plugin to translate this because the echo rectangular image is already applied because Mocha VR recognizes that this is a 360 image and that it needs to apply an echo rectangular lens. So from here, what I can do is I can go to module renders. I can check render and I can check render lens undistort from this drop down menu. Now, what this will do is you can see that this has changed to the front view. Okay, but I don't want the front view to paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take my VR lens and latitude and I'm going to look down negative 90 degrees. All right, so now I can see my rig this whole time. So the other thing I wanna do is I wanna take my longitude and I want to rotate this until I more or less have straight lines. Now, why would I wanna do that? The reason I would wanna do that is because I'm going to use Roto Paint to paint this out. If I don't make this to where it's moving on a straight line and I'm trying to paint bricks, it's gonna be kind of a pain. So you gotta be thoughtful about what you're doing and when you're doing it. And we're actually gonna zoom out a little bit. And that's just so I have more places to pull my bricks from, all right? This is not important, except for it allows me to set up my shot on a shot-by-shot -shot basis. It's not gonna be the same thing. You're, you're not gonna use these settings, negative 97 and 140 for every shot. You are gonna have to use your best judgment because we're all artists here and the machines can only do so much, all right? So we're going to select our Roto Paint tool. Actually, we're gonna select our selection tool. We're gonna select our effect here. I'm going to copy my Mocha VR effect, um, and that's for later. And I'm going to go to Layer, and I'm gonna do Pre-Compose. And that is because of After Effects. So you know when you apply an effect, if you're gonna apply paint on top of it, you have to pre-compose it. This is no different. You go to Move All Your Attributes into the new composition, just like this. And now I can paint on this. I select my Paint Tool. I double click. I select a brush that I like. I'm gonna take a big, huge, fat one just like this because we're gonna just do a really sloppy paint job real quick. Um, I'm going to select this corner up here because I can find it again. And I'm just gonna paint over this rig, just like that. I'm going to take my paint tool, I'm going to select my paintbrush, and I'm going to nudge it into place because we are not savages, we want it to look nice. All right, so now that I have my nice patch over the bottom, I'm going to come into my effect, take my paint, and I want to make sure it is all the way across my scene, and it is, just like that, perfect. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take this and we're going to select it again. We're going to go to Layer, we're gonna to go to Pre-Compose, we're going to move all the attributes into the new composition. And this is a quick and dirty paint job. Like this is the kind of thing for if you just need to slap something over your rig and get, get going. Obviously, the further your shot goes along, the more you might have to change your paint strokes over time to make it match the scene, okay? We're going to move all our attributes to the new composition just like that. And we're going to paste our mocha right back on top of it because we copied the effect 
in our module renders, we're going to go to lens distort. And now I have my patch over the bottom. You can see if we play this forward, we have a much nicer paint job. All right, so this is your workflow for painting out the bottom of a shot uh, to make a rig removal really, really fast. This is why uh, VR is having a hard time like taking off, like 360 video is having a hard time taking off is because everybody can get a VR camera. And here's what they do. They're like, they think everybody wants to see their life, which means they go through and they do crazy shoots. They're like, I'm gonna go hiking and I'm not gonna use a stabilizer at all. Goom, 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 goom. Don't you wanna watch this? Like when I, so we mentioned earlier that, um, that I just recently had a kid. Well, when I was like, four months pregnant, I went to the VR um, LA show, and people were like, don't you wanna watch my, like, my video? Put this headset on, and it was like, oh, oh. <laughs> please don't make me sit through that again. You know, and it was because it's really, it's hard to watch, all right? So if you tried to put a headset on and watch this, oh my God, that is Vomit City. The way we fix that is we have to track an object on the horizon, um, and we can actually reorient based on that object on the horizon. So how does that work? We're gonna track these clouds back here. And I've already tracked this because I'm not gonna make you sit through it. Suffice to say, it tracks, all right? We're tracking the clouds, we've drawn a shape around the clouds and we're following it through the scene, all right? You want to track an area on the horizon that you can either follow through the whole sh shot or you can track overlapping objects over time. So like, let's say I'm walking through a space, I can track a building and then this building and then that building, the closer they get to the horizon, overlap them about 20 uh, frames or so. And if you use all of those to stabilize, then you can use those as well. That's, um, we're working on that actually in the beta. It's gonna be out very soon. Now, once I have this object tracked, I can come into my reorient module. And I can now have this really cool tool here called the horizon tool. And what I can do is I can adjust this shape to line up with the horizon. Just like this. So once I feel like, once I feel like that more or less matches the curve of the horizon, and this is a visual check, I can go ahead and turn that off. And now, Based on my track, it will straighten the horizon out. So here's before, yuck, and here's after, just like that. And now when I render my reorient right here by using this render reorient, right, that's my checkbox, it now renders back to my timeline inside of my host piece of software. So it's pretty cool. You can do some really amazing stuff inside of Mocha VR. I mentioned earlier that we have um, been bought by Boris Effects, so we're all part of one big family now. Well, Boris Effects has a series of VR tools, and one of the tools they have is this thing called Magic Sharp, and they've taken Magic Sharp, I don't know if you guys have used Magic Sharp before, but if you haven't used it in your normal 2D workflow, start using it, because it's awesome. It's an unaliased Sharp, and what it does is it takes your scene and it punches up the detail. Now, in VR, um, has everybody in here looked at a 360 in a headset? Okay, all right. When you look at 360 in a headset, it is super blurry. Like it doesn't matter if you put a 4K or a 6K or an 8K in, when you're in that headset, it is blurry. All right, so what we do is we can bring some of that detail back in once you are done with your edit. So we're gonna go ahead and take our Magic Sharp and turn this on. Let's go to Effect and let's show you where it is. BCC VR and we're gonna do BCC VR Sharpen. All right, now I have some on-screen controls here so I can in increase my fine controls or not. And we can actually take our sharp and small details and increase that. We can sharpen our medium details and increase that. We can sharpen large details. So I'm gonna crank up my small detail sharpen. Just, just crank it up. And it might look like you're overdoing it, but you're not, okay? But look how much better that looks. We get a lot of details back for free. Now this is really, really important in VR. So this is a very cool tool. And the nice thing about it is because it uses the equirectangular lens, to solve for this, you don't end up with like grain at the bottom and grain at the top stretched out because we're not doing a, you know, a weird, we're just not applying a normal 2D effect onto a 3D space and praying that it works, okay? Because that does not work. 
Same thing for blurs. If you apply a non 3D blur on, um, I mean, a non 360 blur onto a 360 footage, what you end up with is a nice fat seam right through the middle of your scene. When you are shooting VR, um, I do want to point one thing out. Uh, I want to show you um, a quick thing of what not to do just because uh, I get a lot of footage and I get a lot of people sending me like troubleshooting stuff. And it's usually people that are new to VR and they don't really think about um, how they're shooting. Uh, we actually did a talk with uh, Matt Celia from uh, Lightwave VFX and uh, they do some really good VR shoots and what they do is they're really conscientious about where they put their crew, where they put their, you know, their uh, camera and how they break the horizon line. Now this is a guy walking through a crowd, but because he's a guy walking through a crowd, he's doing what you are um, almost always tempted to do, which is he turns. Not necessary at all in a VR shoot, because you're already shooting at every angle, okay? If you wanna like, if you wanna turn it, okay, you need to turn it with a reorient or something so that you actually have more control. And here's why. Um, because the more you turn this camera, the more likely you are to increase your parallax, all right? So you're gonna have stitches that look wonky. In motion, you can't see how wonky this stitch is. But you're gonna have to stabilize this to make it watchable. So watch what happens when we stabilize it. All right. Look. Okay, look, watch this. You don't want that, all right? I'll just scroll through so you can see. Do you see how that bell is getting totally uh, predator effect warped over the top? That's because that's one eye of the camera that's being stitched, and because it's not staying in one place, it's really obvious when it goes over those seams. You don't have to shoot like that, all right? You can always reorient where the camera is looking once you're done. So be really conscientious about where your lines are, where your eyes are looking, you know, where your subject is placed. Um, with a lot of VR cameras, uh, one of the things you don't want to do, and people just never pay attention to this, is you've got like, you need to stand like six feet back from the camera. Your close ups are always like middle shots up. If you need a close up in VR, it's middle shot up. Because if you get too close to that camera, the parallax is horrible, okay? And we can help you fix that. Like you can take an eye from another shot and you can do a solve that solves really well for this eye and a solve that solves really well for this eye and you can do mocha roto and you can blend these two shots together and you can overlap them and there's a lot that you can do to try to make it work. But it's a lot of work that you don't want to have to do if you don't have to. So plan your shots, be smart, you know. Um, when you need to do a rig removal, okay, make sure that the ground plane you're moving over doesn't have a lot of like shadows streaking across the ground because those are going to be things that you're going to have to account for when you're patching the floor and you don't want to have to rebuild shadows. It is a pain, okay? So just be conscientious about your shoots. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the appeal of VR is a run and gun sort of thing and we can help you, we can help you overcome those problems, but it is so much more fun and a better use of your time to use these tools for the artistic purposes that they are, that they are best suited for and not for the grunt work um, that you're gonna have to do, especially because VR budgets are low. They, like, they are more work and they are lower than most projects. So that's with rare exceptions. You, know, you have some major players that are trying to pay more for content, but in general, because it's low-end cameras, and usually run and gun style stuff, the budget's super low. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure um, that you do use the plugin because it's actually uh, works inside your software and you don't have to sit there and render and then re-import everything. It actually reads from and renders to your timeline. I have stopped using the standalone. You can use it if you want to. It's a great tool, but me personally, I'm all about the plugin. It's cheaper too. Okay, so I am Mary Poplin, and this has been a Boris Effects demo uh, using Mocha VR and the BCC VR tools.